Teaching in geometry leads him to believe that a straight line is the shortest distance between two points. Crossing a busy thoroughfare between intersections, however, is neither the quickest nor the safest way. Just a hundred feet away is a crosswalk where the southern gentleman would find motorists stopping to permit his crossing. What street carries the greatest volume of traffic in the world, K. Kaiser? That's right, you're right, it's Wilshire Boulevard. Now, the appearance of this young lady would stop traffic almost anywhere. But when a pedestrian steps into the street between parked cars, the motorist is given little warning. Walking out from behind a stopped street car is another bad pedestrian habit almost certain to catch the motorist unawares. largest city in the world in area, Los Angeles has the added distinction of possessing one of the finest emergency ambulance and hospital services in the world. Available at a moment's notice are these fast-moving units which bring first aid to persons in need of medical attention. must go the credit for the saving of innumerable lives in their fast errands and quick treatment of injuries. It isn't always the pedestrian who's wrong, however. A signal creeper forces this pedestrian to take rather unusual means to cross the street. This young lady doesn't seem to learn by experience. The crossing of the street in mid-block is the greatest single footfall of pedestrians. In instances such as this one, it is only the alertness of the driver which saves a pedestrian from a tragic accident. Uh-oh, did I hear someone say there never was an officer around when a serious violation was committed? Death or injury means of attaining safety while walking is demonstrated by these children. Correct walking, which implies both legal and safe walking, once learned, becomes habitual. Parents who spend time teaching their children the proper way and place to cross the street are ensuring themselves against future heartaches. never make that broadcast. Am I right, Kay Kaiser?
the most deadly menace to life and safety that our country has ever known. Every day, his hurtling car kills or maims more than 3,000 people on the streets and highways of America. His mad driving leads to accidents like this, and this. No war, no pestilence, no crime wave has taken such a relentless toll in lives and human misery as this murderous fiend behind the wheel. Yet his activities are now so much a part of our daily lives, they are accepted as a matter of course. When the Morro Castle burned off the coast of New Jersey, it made front page headlines in papers from coast to coast. 134 die in burning liners. Though automobiles take three times as many lives every month, these auto accidents are seldom used except to the loved ones of the victims. When this hurricane swept across Florida, leaving a trail of destruction estimated at $3 million, it was the cause of national dismay. Every newspaper, every newsreel, every radio station devoted ample space and time to reporting its details. But few people get excited about the economic loss from motor vehicle accidents, although in the small state of New Jersey, this loss was $30 million last year. The floods of 1936 will go down in history because of the great loss of life and destruction of property, a toll of 169 killed and half a billion in property damage. Yet even today, the toll of last year's automobile accidents is almost forgotten, although more than 200 times as many people were killed by autos. What can we do about the appalling loss in life and property that this mad driver is causing year after year? Who doesn't abide by the rules is ostracized. The man who kicks a golf ball is a man with whom none of us like to play, or even to know. Yet many of us who wouldn't think of cheating on the fairway cheat regularly on the highway although the result of our cheating may be the loss of a life instead of a game. In racing, the jockey who wins by crowding another horse to the rail is not very popular with the crowd. Yet put him in a driver's seat instead of a saddle. Let him commit the same foul on the open road and it will go almost unnoticed. In football, the dirty player doesn't remain long on the team because the American public won't stand for poor sportsmanship. If each of us would take the same attitude toward dirty driving that we do toward dirty tackling, this same public opinion would soon take much of the discourtesy and carelessness off the road. After examining these records, we went out on the road, and Mr. Vey pointed out to me examples of bad driving habits that cause over 90% of automobile accidents. Apparently, most drivers don't realize how dangerous many of these habits are until after the accident. One of the first bad habits that we saw was passing on the shoulder of the road. The shoulder is for emergencies, not for passing. This habit leads to many accidents. Then opposed to cars that were driving on the shoulder when they should have been on the pavement, we saw cars parked on the pavement instead of on the shoulder. These fellows will have something more serious than tire trouble if they don't move over. Driving too close to the car in front, particularly in heavy traffic, that's one of the most dangerous habits. But an even worse cause of serious accident is the habit of cutting in and out through moving traffic, endangering the occupants of car after car as the offender weaves from line to line. With this fault is often combined that of driving too fast for conditions, a habit which by itself figures in many of the most serious accidents. Until I took this trip, I couldn't understand how a head-on collision was possible on a divided highway. But I learned that there were actually people who drive on the wrong side of the division. Another potential accident causer that we met was the fellow who stops out in the middle of the road to read a road sign. If you don't know where you want to go, it's only common courtesy to get out of the way until you find out. Leave the road open for those who know where they're going. Of the many pedestrians that we saw on the highway, far more than half were walking with their backs to traffic, a dangerous habit day or night. Most drivers seem to be reasonably careful about passing on a curve. Most, but not all. Because the danger of being out on the wrong side of the road when vision is blocked is so obvious, this is an inexcusable habit. The same is true of passing at or near the crest of a hill. Yet we met several drivers willing to risk their own and other lives in this foolhardy manner. Even on a straight road, careless sloppy passing is an accident breeder, particularly in urban areas. And no matter how wide the road, there are some drivers who seem to think that they must do their passing on the extreme left-hand side. It's surprising how many drivers don't bother to get into the proper lane before turning. We saw right turns from left lanes and left turns from right lanes with and without hand signals. And speaking of hand signals, we saw a wide variety of novel and interesting ones, most of them meaningless. 
In addition to those drivers who put out their hand for some purpose other than signaling, and those who made signals that were impossible to interpret, there were many whose signals were definitely misleading, who signaled for a right turn and made a left, or vice versa. The fellow who forms a third line at a traffic signal is a particular pest. Although not quite as dangerous, perhaps, as the driver who comes flying through an unsignalized intersection without caring who has the right of way. Add to these two the habit of trying to beat the light, squeeze through on the amber, and you have the three great causes of intersection accidents. In the city, we saw such bad habits as getting out on the wrong side of a parked car and pulling away from the curb without signaling or exercising due caution. Urban pedestrian accidents are a big factor, many of them caused by the failure of drivers to give pedestrians the right of way. But pedestrians, too, have bad traffic habits. Walking in front of a trolley or bus, for instance, and, of course, there is the ever-present children's habit of playing in the street, a habit that drivers can start to correct in their own homes with their own children. To get further examples of pedestrian habits, we paused at the intersection of Broad and Market Streets in Newark. At this busy intersection, the police have found it necessary to station a traffic officer at each corner, solely to control pedestrian traffic. Moving from one side of the corner to the other as the light changes, he keeps pedestrians on the curb until traffic stops and permits a safe crossing. To find out what would happen if these officers were not on duty, we arranged to have them removed for a few minutes. Although each corner bore a sign advising pedestrians to wait for the red light, the majority of them paid no attention to either the signs or the lights. They crossed against the light, they crossed in the middle of the block, they strolled across as though they were on a country lane, they even walked down the middle of the street and this at one of the busiest intersections in the whole world. In Newark, we saw many, many instances of double parking, one of which almost caused an accident involving a fire truck. During our trip, we questioned drivers whose driving was particularly reckless, and some told us that they got a thrill out of taking chances. Personal danger may be thrilling to some people. How else can we account for the fellows who fly upside down and spin dizzily around the track? But while a man may have the right to risk his own life in stunts like these, he has no right to risk the lives of others. The place for such antics is in public exhibitions, where millions of people pay money to watch daredevils risk their necks, not on the highway. The man who risks his own neck in reckless stunts may be a fool or he may be a hero, but the gangster who gets a thrill out of shooting down innocent bystanders is just a murderer, and the man who seeks his thrills on the highway is in the same class. The thrill driver, the deliberately reckless driver, causes accidents, yes, but they are few in number and can be stamped out. But we can't stamp out the average driver who, through occasional carelessness, discourtesy, and bad driving habits, causes the vast majority of accidents. The murderous fiend of the highway is your carelessness. Only you can conquer him. A little effort will correct your bad habits, and once corrected, good driving will be an effortless habit. Surely, surely, that's a small price to pay as your share in laying low the beast that murdered 36,000 men, women, and children on America's highways last year. Safety material has been prepared and distributed to the press, which has willingly cooperated by keeping the public informed of police enforcement activity. Posters illustrating unsafe pedestrian practices or footfalls have been placed at advantageous locations. The police department has also conducted a weekly radio broadcast as a clearinghouse for complaints and suggestions relative to traffic. My, my, such persistence, Professor. Incidentally, what's your curbstone opinion of our traffic situation, Kay Kaiser?